Hey, Libra friends, it's me, Lieberman. It's Wednesday. I know that it's kind of late, and I'm sorry. Things have been absolutely nuts this week, and I didn't pre-shoot. So here we are with the late post times. But next week, things will be back to normal. Prayers, all that. It will be, it will be, it will be. So I got three emails today, and we're going to start immediately because I want to get this online as soon as possible. This first email is from a Libra friend. Uh... He is 17 and a half and from Paris, France. And the uh, name of this email, the subject line is advice on anger and a few things. Um, I love your show. You're one of the smartest person I know and uh, I wish you all the best. You could become the Jewish version of Oprah one day. <laughs> uh, more seriously, I'm in college transitioning uh, from an English to arts degree. Um, I've been accepted and eager to start but I still have a personal problem like most of the teenagers my age. I can be very touchy if someone upsets me or says mean things. I have learned to control that anger and by not responding to the person, which will automatically and eventually upset and frustrate me, it is even more difficult because I'm uh, hypersensitive. I know I've come a long way uh, from being a precocious child to being bullied, uh, to start understanding social codes, though not compromising my personality, and made friends. I always find a solution to my problems, but from dealing with bullying, which made me stronger and smarter, to anxiety, but that forgive and forget thing is mission impossible for me. Um, I know that these people are assholes and unimportant, but I can't, I took too much, so much shit, too much, so much shit from people while staying away from trouble and fights. My parents are not helpful either. They are very close-minded and it is hard to talk to them about my problems, and my potential homosexuality. I hate labels uh, since it is a sin, an anomaly, and against nature. They're wrong. <clears throat> I try to avoid them because I'm starting to like them less over the years. Uh, only my two older brothers, I have a sister and she's like my parents, and my friends know about it. Uh, anyway, I always say I will go to a therapist, enroll in dance and theater classes, but I keep on procrastinating. Do you maybe know a way to be better at ignoring assholes and opportunists other than maturity over time? Uh, I know that's a lot and I might not be in your video, but talking to someone other than my brother who thinks I'm disproportionate and ridiculous and help my helpless best friend or my poor hint. Okay, makes me feel good and kind of liberating. Thank you, Matt. Um, I'm just realizing how dark this video is and I hope it's not too dark. Um, <clears throat> here's the thing, Lieber friend. First of all, forgive and forget is maybe a misnomer. I choose to maybe not, you don't have to forgive. You don't, and you don't have to forget either. I think it's kind of stupid to choose to just forget about every bad thing any person has ever done for you. I think that the two key things are not letting it fuck your shit up when someone is terrible to you um, and also being open to the possibility that that person is more than that interaction. Let me, I'll get into one and then two. So I talk a lot about how I deal with like bad internet comments but it really does apply to any time that someone is bad to you. DJ once said in a table talk, and I think it's such a good way to describe it, uh, everyone is the hero of their own story and we are all a villain in someone else's story. We don't know what goes through people's heads. We don't know what turns them into a dick. We don't know what makes them lash out at people. But We've all said and done things that we're not proud of too. Maybe not quite as bad, maybe not quite as insensitive, but we have. So I try not to judge or loathe people unless it's confirmed to me that the, the action isn't a standalone thing, that they are in fact a person who doesn't care about other people who doesn't really give a shit what they do or say to other people and just sort of like, you know, fuck me if uh, if I get in the way, get in their fucking warpath. Um, but just, just fucking breathe. Just because someone said something, and I know you're saying like, um, I know these people are assholes and unimportant. Um, they're not necessarily assholes. They are not important. The only thing that's important is... How do you want to feel today? Who do you want to be? How do you want to act? Because for me, I used to get crazy angry at people. I used to get so angry 
that people would treat me so poorly or that they didn't understand me or that they didn't want to spend time with me. I would spend so much energy just being pissed when we can't control anyone other than ourselves. I think the best thing to think about is knowing that there is no stopping people from being shitty to you, but it can hurt less when you realize, I don't know what's going on in this person's mind or in their life, but I bet it sucks. And they might not even know. They might be lashing out and not even have the self-awareness to understand that that's coming from somewhere negative. I feel bad for those people. And instead of letting their words really enter my soul, I try to think about how ridiculous it is that someone spent that energy just to make someone else upset or to poo-poo someone because they're insecure. And I, I try to laugh about it, but more often than not, I'm just like, I feel bad for you. I feel bad for you that that is how you need to get through life, that you don't have any better options. When someone says something to you that upsets you, you can either say nothing, you can walk away, or you can say, you're entitled to your opinion, you're wrong, but you're entitled to your opinion. I'm gonna go over here and be awesome now. Um, just know that as long as you aren't using your ability and your power and your words to hurt other people, you are okay. You are great. And the more you can hold true to that truth in those moments where you don't feel awesome, where you feel like maybe someone could be right, the more you can just be like, hold on. This is coming from a person who doesn't fucking know me, who is operating from their own place of insecurity. Why should I stop living my awesome life to give them the time of day if they can't afford me the same respect? I'm going to keep doing my thing. Dude, you want to go see a therapist? You want to take theater and dance classes? Stop procrastinating and do it now. Because later on, when you do or don't do it, you're going to say, how on earth could I have wasted so much time being afraid of doing something that I actually want to do? Go, do it. There's nothing stopping you. The only thing preventing you from doing, stop watching this video, pause it right now and take the first step. Go look up some theater and dance classes. Go look up a therapist. Ask your parents if you can see a therapist. You can stop this video right now and go do it. It's, it feels harder than it is because it's a step into a new world. It's, it's shifting your life from one track to another. It's a simple motion, just that, just the pulling the switch. But it feels like it'll be a lot of work because you know that that track is different. We spend a lot of our energy preparing ourselves for future pain and trying to avoid it, right? When we switch the track, all of a sudden a whole bunch of new variables enter the picture and it it's scary. It's scary because a lot of the things that we've been preparing ourselves for may no longer be a part of the equation. That's scary. But what's scarier? planning for those new things, or living a life unfulfilled. I think the second one. And also, mind you, if you're ever thinking, well, well, it's safer to stay on this path, life isn't safe. Life will throw things at you that you cannot possibly plan for, that you cannot possibly predict. So why insulate yourself from pain when pain is inevitable? That might sound discouraging. That might sound sad. Pain is inevitable. I try to think of it as something that's liberating. Sorry about that, guys. I got a phone call and that interrupted my, uh, my video. What I was saying was, if I know for a fact that there are days where I will feel pain, no matter what I'm trying to do with my life, I can do the things that are scary and risky that I might actually like because it doesn't matter whether I do them or not. Pain is coming either way. So which life would I la rather lead? A life with pain where I'm not doing the things that I love or a life with pain where I do? I choose the latter. There is no life where there is no pain.
period. I hope that that helps you. I'm, I'm sorry that, uh, I'm sorry that you, you are feeling this frustrated and don't listen to your parents. They've got it all wrong. Someday, hopefully they will accept you. Um, but if they don't, don't think that that precludes you from having an amazing life. They'll come around. And if they don't, you can have an amazing life without them. And they're going to regret forever their inability to come to terms with what life is. In life, people are gay. It's not a problem. It's not a mistake. It's not an affront to God. If there is a God... Guess what? If there is a God, God created gay people too. God doesn't make mistakes. If there is a God, doesn't make mistakes. Shit happens. Shit just happens. You are a beautiful and unique and powerful soul. Go live the life that you deserve. And good people will follow you along the way. I hope that helps. All right. Next email. All right, this email's from Maggie. Uh, my question to you is, I've been watching YouTube for a few years now. I have about 150 subscriptions that I watch every day. You watch 150 subscriptions every day? How do you have time? There's no time. Each YouTuber inspires me in different ways. Over the last two years, I've had two ideas for YouTube channels of my own, but I always refrain from putting myself out there. Part of my teenage regrets involved not having learned deeply enough how to edit music or videos and how to make decent websites or use Corel slash Photoshop. I know only a little bit about these things, except Corel, I don't know squat. Um, but every time I think of trying to produce internet content, eventually I feel like I can't produce material that is cool enough visually and I lose motivation. I'm now 28 years old, uh, the same age as some of our great YouTubers, and I feel like I'm way behind. Have I missed the train? Long pause. I don't even know if that figure of speech applies in English, but I don't know if now, while getting my PhD in translation studies, which is something I also love, and analyzing game localization, which is great, I don't know if I should dedicate some of my time to learn these tools to do YouTube, do it anyway, or just quit the idea and keep nagging about it for a very long time. What's your input about this? Thank you so much, Maggie. Here's the thing, Maggie. You can start doing anything at any time. It's true. Think of John Green. John Green is in his late 30s. He's like 37. You have plenty of time. There's a great quote, and I don't fucking remember who it's from, and I think it's from Ira Glass. And he basically said, um, there's a tendency among artists or people who want to create things um, to get very discouraged early on. Because you look at your early stuff, the things that you're making, and it's not very good. And that bothers you because you have good taste. Taste is the thing that sets all people apart. It sets you apart from everyone else. When you have good taste, you know that the things you're making are not as good as you'd like them to be. And a lot of people, they see the thing that they're making, it's not very good, and then they stop altogether. The trick is, what he says, and what I agree with, is accept that the things you're going to be making for a little while are going to be not great. But keep making things. Because the more you create the better your things become because now you have experience in making things and you know how to make them better, a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. And over time, you will discover at some point that you are making things that you're proud of. So no, you haven't missed the train. Start making your stuff. The good news about YouTube is uh, no one has to know that you're making anything until it's any good. You don't have to send it to blogs if it's not good. You don't have to try to share it on social media if it's not good. You can just make the shit you want to make because you fucking love it. So if it's a passion of yours, pursue. There is no age limit on YouTube. Go and do. Just do something that you love. All right, final email. Um, all right, this is from a Libra friend. She is 15 years old from New Zealand. For a while now, I've noticed that my mental health state has been changing and not in a good way. It has come to a point where I'm 100% sure that I have some sort of mental health issue and I just don't know what it is and that is the problem. I've noticed that I've been isolating myself a lot. I've never been a very extroverted person anyway and I quite like being left alone. I just seem to be isolating myself more than normal. 
My grades have also been slipping. I now get angry quite easily. When in big crowds, I get quite scared and feel claustrophobic. My weight has been dropping. I've been overly stressed. I've become a very emotional and vulnerable person. I've noticed a lot more, but I don't want to waste your time listing them all. The first time I noticed I wasn't myself was after my dad passed away when I was 10. I just shrugged it off as grief, and it probably was. But I've never been fully myself since then. The only person I've told is one of my friends, but only very vaguely as one. Oh, as one, she has her own problems she's dealing with, and I don't want to waste her time trying to get better with dealing with my problems, and two, she didn't seem very interested in my problems anyway. I've tried to tell my mom, but every time I try, I have a big anxiety attack and just end up huddled in my room listening to music to calm me down. Every time I try to search the internet to see what po could possibly be wrong with me, I end up in a crying, confused mess. I just feel alone in this mess, and I don't want to be, I want to help, I want help, I just don't know how to tell anyone or who to tell. I'm also terrified that if I tell anyone, they'll just say it's a phase, you'll get over it, because I know it's not. In June, I'm going to two concerts, and in July, my uncle is hopefully still taking me to Europe, mainly France and Italy, but possibly England and Greece, too, for three weeks. I'm hoping these will help me get better or feel better for a bit. I hate feeling like this, and I want it to end. I just don't know how. I love you and everyone else at SourceFed and SourceFed Nerd. You all bring a smile to my face when no one else can. Okay, Lieber friend, I want you to really hear me when I say there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. A lot of my biggest issues, mentally, emotionally, came from the fact that I received a consistent message from a very young age that there was something wrong with me. When there isn't. Yeah, I have dysthymic disorder. Dysthymic disorder is a low level of depression that exceeds two years and has a lot of other offshoot symptoms. It's part of who I am, but there's nothing wrong with me. There isn't. I'm me, and you're you. Now, you've suffered a trauma. Don't dismiss grief. Grief is a powerful emotion, and a lot of people spend a lot of effort trying to avoid feeling grief. And when you're a kid, um, no one's really telling you how to process it or that it's okay to feel that way or not feel that way. I spent many years hating myself because I didn't cry at my granddad's funeral and I assumed that that meant I didn't really love him, which is not the truth. I was just so overwhelmed with the pressure to be sad that I just kind of forgot how to cry or maybe I just wasn't able to do it. Sometimes you're just not. I can cry when I'm hurt physically, but it's hard to cry when something terrible has happened sometimes. Um, stop Googling what's wrong with me with my mental health problem. You don't have one. Because of the trauma in your life and the instability that's come since and the doubts that no one's been able to give you answers for, yeah, you're dealing with anxiety. Yes, you're dealing with depression. Yeah, you're more closed off. That doesn't have to have a medical name. Those are your behaviors. It's part of who you are. Does it have to be who you are forever? Absolutely not. You have the power to be whatever version of yourself you wish to be. I talk all the time about how happiness is a choice and a fight and a daily struggle. It is all of those things. And if you want to start that fight today, you can succeed. You can and will succeed. Don't fear that you are not enough or that you are broken or that you are flawed. Everyone is flawed. But that means also that everyone is unique. Now that you've identified that you don't like some of your behavior, you can start to change it instead of hating yourself for having that behavior. A trip is not going to fix you, but I can guarantee that it will make you feel better. 
Getting outside yourself, changing your routine, even in small ways, wakes your soul up. So don't even wait for the summer. Wake that soul up. Take different routes to, to school. Do your, your chores in a different order. Do your homework in a different order. Do it in a different spot in the house. Don't even do it in the house. Try to do new things that will wake you up and do something that makes you happy every day. I hope that helps. All right, folks, I gotta go. I hope you enjoyed this video. You're my Libra friends, and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.